Hello and welcome to another American Truck Sim video. My name is Moose78. I hope you're all having a great day today. In today's video, we're going to go over some recent news about future updates for ATS. And there's a lot to get to, so let's jump right into it. The developer, SCS Software, recently announced that doubles are coming to ATS as a free update. In a recent blog post, they said that after quite some years of internal discussions and frankly, some frustrations and struggles to have the gameplay as well as technical side of multi-trailer physics support ironed out, we finally feel ready to reveal fresh info about the progress on doubles. Additionally, they stated that the new trailers and physics improvements will be released in their next point release update, which is targeted for early summer. They later went on to say that they are also wrapping up work on the heavy cargo packs for both ATS and ETS2. In a previous update, SES mentioned that they've been spending considerable time during the recent year fine-tuning truck and trailer physics and improving powertrain simulation. We feel more and more confident now that we'll be soon ready to share the results of this development with you. We are preparing new content and gameplay features for both Euro Truck Simulator 2 and American Truck Simulator. As a first, we plan to bring you a pack of new heavy cargo sitting on all new trailers for ETS2. The driving experience with 50 plus tons in tow is very different, so much in fact that it may tempt us to pack in new powerful chassis configurations for some of the trucks. And so far this is what we know about the heavy haul DLC. They did say it is going to be a paid DLC, but said it should be comparable to the high power cargo DLC for ETS2 which I believe is about 5 bucks out on Steam. We also know that multiple pivot points are confirmed, as well as heavy haul signage and beacons. And as of this video, there is no release date yet. Both the Double Trailer Update and Heavy Haul DLC are both very solid updates that will no doubt inspire a lot of people in the mod community to create some pretty amazing mods inspired by both DLCs. Furthermore, it is good to see SES supporting the game by more than just releasing new states. Heavy Haul has always been popular within the community, and I know a lot of people have wanted wiggle wagons in the game for quite some time and I personally cannot wait for this to be released and see what the community does with it. Moving right along, amidst all the new trailer and cargos, SCS also gave us an update on the progress of the New Mexico DLC, specifically the prefabs. They had the following to say, an important part of the in-game economy are the prefabs representing local industries. They should be visually recognizable and believable for gameplay to be fun. Prefabs are often represented by a typical building, special purpose installation, or even a whole industrial complex. We focus on their realistic appearance and adjust them to fit perfectly into the surroundings. The team is doing their homework on research to make sure we take proper inspirations from relevant real industrial facilities as the basis for our work. The prefabs we know about so far include, but may not be limited to, a quarry, rail yard, and the one I'm most intrigued by, are the ones designed for the food industry, and SES had the following to say. Within the prefab intended for the food industry, we may have gotten a little carried away. We designed and implemented unique depots that will surprise you by their size. We were inspired by actual existing industrial facilities for production of cereals and dairy products. An important feature of those two objects represents separated locations for loading and unloading, the rear wing is used for supply of raw materials and the front of one distribution of finished products. This solution is designed according to the regulations for the transport of foodstuffs. And just to look at the screenshots, I cannot wait to deliver to some of these places because they look absolutely amazing and they're just absolutely huge too. So should be a really good update for uh, New Mexico. They've also went on record to say that each state's going to have its kind of own unique prefabs, so that way they capture the unique industries that uh, each state uh, does. And again, as of this video, no release date uh, for the New Mexico DLC. And finally, last month, SES did an AMA on Reddit. A link to the full AMA can be found down in the video description. But I wanted to highlight a couple of the items that I found to be particularly interesting. However, I do recommend that you go back and read the entire AMA, as there is a lot of good information in there. Now the topic I found most interesting was related to graphics and the rendering of the game. SES representative Human-like Interface when asked about making improvements to the game engine stated the following. Sadly, DirectX won't solve most of the issues. 
Transition from one of these to another is complicated because pipeline we set up has been working in certain ways all these years, which means that something that are optimized might get wrecked during the transition. Also, switching engine probably won't help your frame rate at all. It just governs the way the program is executed and how not really changing anything about the program. It actually might even slow the game down a bit as we optimize it on the new engine. But there are people working on it. Low FPS are mostly due to high res mirrors that forces the game to render each scene multiple times. That is the largest FPS killer in the game at the moment. Also, and this is kind of an interesting thing, also, Vulcan seems preferable over DirectX 12. No hard evidence, but I am thinking that Vulcan is the preferred transition target, but I am not sure. And he finished off by saying DirectX 9 is great for low-end cards. On high-end, new ones, it occasionally does more harm than good. And then later on, another SES representative replied by saying that Vulcan is cool. So I'm going to be keeping my eyes and ears peeled uh, for any information regarding that because I find that to be very, very interesting. If we could get the game to something like Vulcan, we could possibly see tremendous performance gains, which I know everyone would be just absolutely elated about. If I hear anything about that, I'll update you guys as soon as I can on that. Then later on in the AMA, someone asked about multiple trailers, multiple trailer drops, and trailer ownership, and human-like interface had the following to say. Some of it is being worked on, can't say anything else or even when it could come out. It would be inconsiderate to promise anything and then don't deliver. Well, we of course now know that doubles are being released early on in the summer and that we're also getting heavy haul uh, cargo DLC and trailers. But the question remains, however, will we get trailer ownership soon? That's something we're going to have to keep our eyes and ears uh, peeled for and uh, maybe we'll get it sooner than later, who knows? And lastly, when asked about adding more trucks to the game and why SES didn't add fake truck brands, he responded by saying, You see, sometimes company can be very protective of their logos. And since we have such a brand recognition, lots of players, if we could put fake brands into the game that, it, that looks exactly like real trucks, I am pretty sure we would get our asses sued straight into the sun. Also, SES owners said that they decided that they want to do it right and buy the books, so we roll with that and I think that is the right decision. Definitely long term wise for partnerships with manufacturers. You do more harm once and get away with that, it is okay, but you can't expect anyone to work with you after that. Same thing goes with manufacturers. CAD helps us a lot. As for ATS trucks, I am pretty sure that we are getting somewhere. Nothing near term, I believe, but we are going in the right direction. So again, I highly suggest you guys go back and read that AMA. There is a lot of good information. That was just a few of the topics I kind of cherry picked out of there that really caught my eye, but really recommend you go back and read that because there's a lot of good stuff in there. But guys, we covered a lot of information today. Which DLC are you most excited for and why? Be sure to leave a comment down below regarding the DLC or anything else we covered today for that matter. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, if you liked today's video, be sure to like, share and subscribe it just helps me a ton and helps the channel grow but until the next time stay safe out there take care and we'll be seeing you